In this lecture, I would like to talk about Fourier transform pair, specifically talking about non-periodic functions. Now, when we talk about the non-periodic function, let me try to refresh your memory. Earlier lecture, I have already mentioned to you that any periodic function, f of t, can be expressed in terms of the exponential form together with the unknown complex coefficient c tilde k, as shown in equation 26 earlier that I repeated in here. Well, how do we calculate the complex constant c tilde k? That complex number c tilde k can be com computed based on the equation I mentioned to you earlier, equation 28, that I repeated in here. So, equation 26 and equation 28 will give you a way to express any periodic function f of t in the exponential form with the unknown complex number c tilde k. Now, let us try to introduce the new notation for our convenience. Suppose we define f hat, that function f hat, which is depending on i, k, and omega naught. That function f hat is defined according to what I show you in equation 1. So f hat is equal to the integral from minus d over 2 to plus d over 2 of f of t times e raised to the power minus i k omega naught t dt. Notice one thing. In equation 28, the integral going from the limit from 0 to the period capital T in the definition of the function f hat shown in equation 1, the limit of the integral is going from minus t over 2 to plus t over 2. It shouldn't be matter because either limit, it will cover the entire period, capital T. So the definition of the function f hat is a function of i, k, omega naught is given as shown in equation 1. That is the definition of f hat. Now, with that definition of f hat, then you can go back to equation 28, and you can easily recognize that the integral over there can be replaced by that function f hat. OK? And that is the way to calculate for the complex number c delta k as you can see on the next slide. So now you can see the complex number c tilde k can be expressed in terms of the new, newly defined function f hat, as I just mentioned to you on the previous slide. And therefore, the periodic function f of t, which is expressed as equal to summation of c k tutor time e raised to the power i k omega naught t. That is the way to define the periodic function f in terms of the exponential e and in terms of the complex number c tilde k. Now, with that in mind, you can recall that this complex number c tilde k will be expressed in terms of the new notation as 1 over t times f hat i k omega naught. And the other term that you have is like e raised to the power i k omega naught t that term remain in here. So nothing is fancy here. 
we just express the periodic function f in terms of the newly defined function f hat. That's all we have done so far. And please remember, so far we say this function f of t is a periodic function. Now, the next thing we want to talk is what happens when you have a function f, which is non-periodic. Non NP means non-periodic. Well, we can say this way. A function which is a non-period function can be considered as a function f, but having the period capital T is equal to infinity. In other words, a non-periodic function, you can say it is the same thing like a periodic function, but it will repeat itself after the time equal to infinity. Well, when capital T go to infinity, it is the same thing like saying the frequency equal to zero. And the reason is because if you remember the formula that we said to you earlier, omega zero is equal to two pi times f. And f is defined as one over capital T, which is the period. So now, if you have a non-periodic function, we can say like it is just like a periodic function, but the capital T, the period, is equal to infinity. So when t go to infinity, this period, which we call it, I mean this frequency, which you call delta f, this guy, delta f, will approach to zero. And that is exactly what I said to you right here. When a non-periodic function is considered, you can think of like a, a periodic function with a period equal to infinity or a periodic function with delta f approach to zero. Okay, so, and then what else? The factor one over t, the factor one over t now become delta f. The factor one over t become delta f for the same reason I just said to you right here. Okay, one over t is equal to delta f. And then after that, you have the same remaining term, which is f hat time e raised to the power i k omega naught t. That term is shown right here in the uh, blue color mark. So what you have now is the last equation on, this, on the computer screen, which say uh, a non-periodic function can be expressed as the limit of the summation delta f, keep in mind delta f approach to zero, time f hat, time e raised to that power. Now, how do you go from the previous equation to the last equation? The only thing that we have done actually is we replace omega naught, omega naught, by 2 pi delta f. As you can see from this equation right there, omega naught is equal to 2 pi times delta f. So if you replaced omega naught by 2 pi delta f, this is what you have, see, 2 pi delta f, that is omega naught, 2 pi delta f. This is omega naught. Then the previous equation will become the last equation.